Hello, sweet friends, it's me, your magical Christmas elf. And if anyone needs a magic wand right now, it's us. We're only a week away. So let's put away those ideas for decor and let's start thinking of ideas for gifts. How about some shabby chic ideas with me, Indiana Jones? Let's get started. This is a shabby chic collaboration with none other than Becky of Kind of Shabby. So please remember to check out her channel right after my video. She has wonderful shabby chic ideas. Well, to start, you can't have any kind of tags on your shabby chic gifts. You should make shabby Christmas tags. So this is what this is all about. I found these wonderful wooden tags at Hobby Lobby and I believe it was on sale. So I think there were $2.99 for the whole set. And I think it was a dozen and of course it came out to a dollar fifty and here I'm using some graphic fairies um, what is it shabby graphics and I loved these pastel Christmas tags that I found on that website it's just a wonderful place to go so please check out uh, the graphics fairy <laughs> for all your graphic needs and they have wonderful vintage Christmas uh, just designs just beautiful look how lovely these are and honestly you can use these tags all throughout the year not just for Christmas but I thought this was a wonderful way to tag my gifts this year so let's start by making a corset vase what's a corset vase well basically a vase that looks like a corset where did I get the idea well I thought it was very feminine and shabby chic and I always wanted to make one of those dress forms now I have to say I did get inspiration from uh, Karim of Designs by Karim. I will link her below. She actually made a full dress form, but I didn't want a full dress form. That would take two little uh, waste paper baskets, and these are from the Dollar Tree. I just wanted something that would sit uh, upon my mantle or on my dresser. I didn't want a full form, and uh, I thought a vase would be perfect. So as you can see, I took a cut at the top of the waste paper basket and now I'm just trying to shape it into a very feminine corseted form. I don't know if that makes sense. These waste paper baskets are wonderful for that because you can literally shape it into anything you like. It's so easy because of the, I guess, the uh, crisscross wiring. And all I'm doing is, again, with some gloves and trying to work that into a corset frame shape. Next, I'm going to cover the frame of this corset with some burlap fabric. It's from burlapfabric.com. Burlapfabric.com for all your burlap needs. Yeah, I just made that up. You know, I like to make up jingles. So anyway, I am now an affiliate with burlapfabric.com and they sent me this lovely box of burlap fabric. And I will link below the actual items that I used in this project and in another project. It was perfect to cover this corset frame and give it a more feminine look. I just really, really loved it. I could have used regular fabric, but I have to tell you, honestly, if it's something like for a vase, because it's burlap fabric, it's a, a stronger consistency. So it was perfect to really shape into this corseted shape for this vase. And all I'm doing is pulling it together, folding over the edge edges, I suppose, that are going to be corseted. So there will be some lacing at the front of this corset. And now I'm going to do what would normally be boning or, you know, the stays that you see in regular corsets. I'm actually going to cut and shape the corset in such a way so it looks like there's boning or stays within this corseted vase. You know, if you watch series like, you know, Bridgerton and uh, all these other like British movies that I love, you know, like Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, you always look at the clothing that they wear and you wonder, oh my gosh, these poor actresses had to wear all these corsets underneath. I don't know, sometimes it's nice to wear a corset. Maybe I should start wearing corsets more often. What am I thinking? What? Well, I mean, it's good for your back from what I understand. It, it gives you good posture, but ugh, that would be uncomfortable all day long. Maybe I should just pick one day, one day a week, and I'll wear a corset. You know, like corset Thursdays or something. What am I talking about? Do you meander? Does your mind go off in different places while you're crafting? Mine sure does. 
and it does while I'm doing voiceovers as well, as you can see. So here I am just struggling to give this corset some shape until we start the next phase of this wonderful craft project. Now, as we all know, every corset has some lacing, and here I am creating the lacing for this lovely corseted vase. It's what makes it kind of, I don't know, sexy in a way, but it really should, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to call it sexy. I just think it's very feminine, um, not necessarily sexy, just feminine. There's, I mean, I guess it's sexy to be feminine. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> I really don't. I just, I just think it's pretty. You know, I don't know. I kind of like those, you know, outfits of yesteryear. And I do love this lacing on this corset. I chose green because it's a nice neutral color. I'm going to make this a very botanical type of corset. And you'll see in just a moment. Now, I could have stopped right here. It looks lovely just with the white and the green or any other color. This would have been perfect for a bridal shower centerpiece. Don't you think? It's so pretty. It's so feminine. But I wanted to add a few more embellishments. So using some fabric Mod Podge and these Tim Holtz collage tissue papers, I am just embellishing this lovely corset. As you can see, I put some of the Mod Podge on the actual tissue paper and on the fabric. Again, this is from burlapfabric.com. Burlapfabric.com for all your burlap needs. Oh, you guys are going to get sick of it. And of course, there's Fabric Mod Podge from the Plaid family of products. I really enjoy using Mod Podge. I love decoupaging. And to be able to decoupage this, I don't know, this project, just, I loved it. I had so much fun. Again, I was watching something British, I'm sure, while I was doing this to be inspired. I think I was watching Sense and Sensibility, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I guess that inspired me to add some of these florals. I just think it's so pretty. And I didn't want the florals all over the fabric. Uh, I just wanted it in certain locations. And I think it just works out so, so nicely. So I hope you guys take a chance and, and do something similar to this. What's cool about decoupaging your own fabric is you kind of become like a fabric designer. I mean, you do create your own kind of patterns and fabric. So I really was having fun with this. And uh, I don't know, I guess you can tell. So here I am finishing up this project and I hope that it inspires you to come up with a, a corseted vase of your own. So perfectly shabby chic. Now that was a previously recorded segment, as you can tell, that I had done not so long ago, but I thought it was just such a perfectly shabby chic gift idea that I decided, you know, why not share it? Because not only does it work as a vase, but what a wonderful gift basket where you can put maybe, you know, some an, a mask and some, you know, facial masks and bubble bath and all of those lovely, you know, feminine things. What a wonderful way to give a gift um, with a shabby chic flair. So here I decided, I don't know if this is shabby chic, but I love making macaroons and I love making macaroons with that foam clay. Yes, I know I'm obsessed with the foam clay. It's like, enough with the foam clay. Foam clay people, come on. I would love for you to sponsor me because I love making foam clay stuff. So here I've made my macaroons, they've dried and it usually takes around, I would say four hours or so to dry. And I am just painting them very messily with my pretty red nails, I have to say. I, I was proud of myself that my nails were nicely painted, but now they'll be painted again with the paint that I'm using to make these macaroons. So I used pink and, and this light greenish color. And I am just painting them with acrylic paint from Folk Art paint which is part of the plaid i like to craft forever i feel like i'm crafting forever thanks to plaid i never run out of paint i have not had to run out to the store to get any kind of paints now these what i did was in between for the uh, buttercream what i used was um some spackle or some grout some white 
grout that I got at the Dollar Tree. Now I decided that what it's like, oh, okay, great. I have these cute little macaroons. What am I going to do with them? I decided I'd make a keychain. Isn't this a cute idea? I thought this was a great little gift idea. You can also use this as, you know, as a tag on somebody's gift. But I thought, oh my gosh, this is so cute to make a little keychain. So I have an eye hook, which I'm going to insert in the middle. And I couldn't decide whether I wanted it sideways or just like as you see it here. But here I'm just attaching with an eye hook and a key ring, and I made a key ring. For my next gift idea, I am using one of those um, steel, I forgot what they're called now. Oh my gosh, I forgot what they're called, but they're, they're metal. They're these steel forms that you have at the Dollar Tree, and it almost looks like cake pans, like miniature cake pans. And I'm using these foam rollers. You're like, what the heck is she doing with these miniature cake pans and foam rollers. Look at that, look how cool that looks. So what I am actually going to make and make it very shabby chic and adorable is a ring holder. I have this beautiful shabby chic fabric that I have in my fabric stash. And what I'm doing is as I put each one of the rolls in, I'm gluing the uh, down to the um, metal, the fabric itself. So you'll see here where I just put a line of glue and then I cover the foam with the fabric and I make sure it's nice and tight because I want this to hold my rings and here I'm finishing up that one segment and again I think this only cost me two dollars to make with the foam rollers it was one set of foam rollers and the metal and um, the fabric which I already had and I'm sure you have fabric on hand you can even use um, burlap and and paint it as you like or, or stamp it however you like to use it and here i am just finishing it off and i think it was a wonderful idea you can also use this for your stud earrings it's a great way to store your stud earrings as well with the backs you can just put them here and you can see them on display along with your rings you can also put your pins in here if you like you can just pin them down because of the foam rollers being right there so the only thing you have to make sure is that you make sure that the foam rollers are nicely separated but very snug so when you put your rings in you can even hang this up on the wall I left the little burlap um, not burlap but that twine hanger because you can literally hang this on the wall it's so nice and tight and there are all my lovely rings on display let's make an enchanted book first thing I had to do is get a book from the Dollar Tree and cut out the innards or the center parts so that I can have about a three quarter three, three quarters of an inch depth into the book now I'm going to cover with some wonderful um, shabby chic I guess or vintage paper that I got at Hobby Lobby and I loved it and then I noticed that beautiful violin and I wanted to make sure that that violin was going to be the backdrop for the inside of my book as you can see I'm measuring it out right there I was like oh heck yes I love that little violin I'm gonna make sure that is the centerpiece of my little enchanted book I really enjoy making these enchanted books I've made others in the past I made a mermaid enchanted book I have made one with a beautiful butterfly they're just so much fun to make and I thought what a lovely gift and I can put lights in it if I want I can personalize it I could put somebody's picture inside this is a wonderful gift idea for somebody who's just recently got married or even for an anniversary gift if you uh, you know make this shabby chic kind of book and put their picture inside now I'm gluing the edges of the book that are going to be framed um, by the that little inch cutout the three-quarter inch cutout and now I am inserting my main uh, design inside of that window that you'll see I'm going to be creating a window with a frame so I'm just making sure that everything's in all right and I wanted to embellish this a little more I noticed that the main paper that I used had some roses here and there but I found this wonderful uh, rub on stickers that was given to me by a friend sweet Teresa and here I am just going to rub on a beautiful little bird and some roses and I just think it adds a little more depth color interest what have you so you can make this however you want I've made these 3d as well and I've included rocks and pearls and 
all sorts of wonderful things. I have so much fun making these books, but the hardest thing is cutting out all of those pages. Like the book cover and the pages are very difficult to cut out. And if, uh, you know, I would suggest adult supervision, even if you are an adult yourself, just make sure you don't cut yourself while you cut these pages open. Now I'm adding some greenery. You can add some moss. I've added stones in the past. I've added pearls to cover up that edge just to like make it look a little nicer. And all I'm doing is adding some greenery. And this is some Christmas greenery, but you really can't tell. But I just think it's perfect for the design that I choose. Now I'm going to Mod Podge the cover. Mod Podge. It's, it's the moddiest. I don't know. Or the podgiest. I don't know. It's Mod Podge. What would we do without Mod Podge? I don't know. Use white glue, which is boring. Mod Podge is more fun. That's my thoughts on Mod Podge. Anyway, so I digress, but that's nothing new. Hey, I found my brayer. There's my brayer from Plaid. So all I'm doing again is just Mod Podging that paper onto the cover to make it look so shabby chic and pretty. And make sure that you cover also the spine of the book as well. Now I'm trying to get this frame, which I thought was perfect. It was perfect coloring. It is a little plain, but I kind of like the idea that it is a, a little bit plain because it's almost as if, I don't know if you've seen those paintings, you know, of birds and flowers and stuff. But again, I'm extra, so I'm going to add something extra. I made these embellishments with some air dry clay and some um, molds that I had. Now, I don't think they're IOD molds. I think they might be Prima molds. And now I'm just painting them with a little bit of antique gold so that it would match the little label uh, at the bottom of that frame but it just needed a little bit of embellishment i mean everything about shabby chic is embellishment 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 so here i'm just adding them to the front corner of that frame and i love the idea that it has that little um, badge holder at the bottom so you can put someone's name in it they can put their name or you know the date it could be you know 2021 christmas 2021 whatever you would like to put there and here of course adding more little roses to the um decoupaged paper on the book itself i just love these rub-on transfers that are from the dollar store so if you can find them here i'm just adding another little bird because i just thought oh you know that one little bird inside the frame just seemed lonely so here i am having a little difficulty there i don't know why I couldn't find the edge there it is and I just thought that little bird on that corner was perfect now I'm taking that antique gold paint again from plaid and folk art and just just doing a little bit of dry brush on the corners and the edges just to give it a little more love and there you have it I love this it's so pretty perfect little gift Now, if you're like me, I love saving glass items. And some of the glass items that I've been receiving, not just from myself, but from friends and neighbors, are these wee little uh, yogurt cups. I love these wee little yogurt cups. Why do I say wee like that? Because I just think it's so cute. They call it wee. And here I have my little candle set um, that I have from BB Crafts. And I just melted some candle wax and I added some scent to it that I had got from the Dollar Tree. Now, this is that Gulf wax. Actually, I got it for free at work and there's the scent that I am including. I'm trying to include very wintry scents. And uh, yeah, they had some wax at work. I don't know why. And then I'm using uh, wax melt for the other candles. And one was from Walmart and the other one was from Dollar Tree just to show you that they are perfect. And all you have to do is add a wick and you're done you pretty much have a nice little candle now i'm adding embellishments because what is shabby chic without some embellishments and um, just adding some festive embellishments that not necessarily have to do with christmas so that the recipients of my little candles can use them all year long now these wonderful embellishments are from n beads they are a great company they have everything to do with jewelry making so many beautiful things and i just love these little plaques that they have and this little gingerbread star believe it or not this little gingerbread snowflake is also from n beads and the last one as well it's an embellishment that you can use for anything and here i'm using for more n beads embellishments to 
just uh i don't know spruce up this this plain black satin headband that i got at the dollar tree again if you want to make it shabby chic you got a little embellishment just add a little bit of love and it is shabby chic so here i'm going to add three of those panels and you'll see what a difference it makes it just makes it so much higher end than just a dollar tree headband and i just love this idea for a gift for any friend Thank you again to my sweet friend, Becky of Kind of Shabby. Her and I have been chatting for a while and I just enjoy her channel so much. She has a wonderful channel. If you haven't seen it yet, please go visit her channel. She has wonderful ideas for Christmas and for kind of shabby, but always chic ideas all throughout the year. Thanks again, Becky. If you enjoyed what you saw, well, I hope you like, share, and subscribe, and come back for more. There's always more. You know I'm always coming up with something new, but what I always like to say to my friends is please stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure. Make a corset, why don't you? <laughs> Thank you again, sweet friends, and I just wanted to also say I hope you all have a very safe, happy, and merry Christmas. See you again soon.